Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm sorry for the delay. We had some technical difficulties, but I'm glad that you were able to find us. Uh, so my name is Nancy Sloat, and I'm the Older Adults Program Manager at the Seattle Public Library. And I wanted to start this evening by acknowledging that we are on Indigenous land. These are the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Duwamish people. We honor their elders, past and present, and thank them for the stewardship of this land. So welcome to our program this evening, celebrating the experiences of a group of Singaporean and Seattleite older adults during an eight-week creative arts workshop. Um, we've had um, wonderful partners for our workshop. Um, first, um, I'd like to acknowledge Silver Kite Community Arts in Seattle and Theater Today in Singapore. They have been the creative forces behind this project and have done a most fabulous job facilitating um, our workshop sessions. Um, second, here in Seattle, we've worked with Kinan and CISC, which are two organizations which serve the Chinese and Asian communities in Seattle. And third, I'd like to thank our, our Singapore Fund as uh, one of our sponsors. And I want to give a huge thank also to all of our participants in the workshop series. You really embraced our project and ran with it. And I am so glad personally that I met all of you and could participate in some of your experiences. And I can't wait to see the program which you've all created. And at the end of our program, um, we'll be posting a link to a short survey and at the library, we really appreciate your feedback about our programs. So Jen, I'd like to turn it over to you now. Thanks, Nancy. Hello, everyone. My name is Jen Kulik, and I'm the founder and CEO of Silver Kite Community Arts here in Seattle. It's been our great pleasure to be partnering with so many wonderful people uh, during the last eight weeks to produce this uh, innovative uh, new international project um, aiming to bridge uh, uh, cultures and connect folks across the globe. Uh, so during the eight weeks that we've been together, we have had an opportunity to um, take arts workshops from uh, teaching artists here in the United States as well as in Singapore. And uh, we'll take some time uh, for this part of the program for the participants in the workshop to tell you a little bit about uh, the program and their experiences in each of these workshops. So we're going to start off uh, by uh, talking about the collage workshop, which was taught by Susie Trinan a silver kite teaching artist that's actually based in Brooklyn, New York, and she joined us uh, to facilitate a collage workshop with us. And I will uh, uh, turn it over to Gordon, um, who will talk a little bit more about the program, along with participants Tina, Betty, and Kim A. So I wanted to talk to you about the first art project, which was the creation of original collages. And as she mentioned, our instructor was from Brooklyn, New York, which is three hours ahead of Seattle. And she navigated the way for our newly formed team from Singapore, 15 hours ahead of us. The background of the collage is our individual members collages, which she provided the direction and the confidence to create in just 15 minutes using anything and everything around us. <laughs> Originally, I thought that the use of the arts in describing the COVID activities of seniors um, in the United States and Singapore would turn out to be quite gruesome and depressing. But I think we were all ple pleasantly surprised to find ourselves as a group engaging and looking past the current pandemic reality and actually laughing in the face of COVID to survive. One can see that in the art, which is generally very forward looking to a brighter future. We're gonna start this out with Tina who will describe her work created in the workshop and beyond. Hello, this is Tina from Singapore. Right. We are privileged to have Susie to, to come on board to teach us to do collect art with whatever we have from used items, papers, stickers, post-it. Right. Now you're seeing those little colored 
stickers that is on the artwork. This was what I collected when I went to the library. And this is to indicate the time I have allowed in the library. It's only a two hours. And then when the time is up, the librarian will come up and tell me, you have to leave now because your time is up. All right. Moving on to my second artwork, right? We are the, we are so bombarded by all this negative news about death, the COVID numbers keep on rising, and I giving to turn something positive towards a greener future. This piece of work is from newspaper cuttings, uh, tablecloth, recycled scar, which I cut it out and make into this beautiful art piece, which I love it very much, and I would frame it up in for my hall, right? And passing over to you, right? I'm yes, going I'm to pass it to Gordon. And I've done, I've have done just that, as others have found their personal art pieces precious and suitable for framing. I don't think I've done an art project in 50 years, so I had to stretch and I had to be over prepared. <laughs> I ripped through several magazines to obtain the materials I needed to assemble in the allotted class time. I started with a handheld face sign to which I applied a three-dimensional paper mask. I wanted to surround this mask with a variety of eyes. For the last 18 months, I've only been able to see the eyes of people and no longer see their smiles. The eyes are the only thing we see. When I finished, I decided the final piece should be presented upside down, a somewhat odd outcome for a prepared art piece. Another observation is that the magazines are primarily filled with beautiful eyes, bejeweled eyes, colorful eyes, made up eyes, tan skinned eyes, and almost exclusively women. In fact, only one man's eyes and Jane Fonda's senior eyes have been used. Not much diversity at all. The dark eyes in the original handheld sign mounted upside down is Richard Sherman. Next, Betty will share her story about what she did during the pandemic. Thanks, Gordon and Betty from Singapore. The COVID-19 measures taken by the Singapore government from circuit breaker to the heightened phase two or three alert have kept us, most of us, physically safe, but emotionally drained. The disc collage provides a platform to showcase my thoughts and feelings on how I maneuver around these ever-changing disruptive pandemic situations. Face-to-face -face, uh, with friends to shop and to dine become rather fluid, depending on the gong sounded out by the government policy. The word airport denotes no more traveling, no more socializing at Jewel at our Changi airport. How do I resolve this dissonance within me? having a growth mindset, being open-minded to the use of Zoom, intimidating initially, now have become part and parcel of my teaching, uh, what do you call that, uh, Zoom lessons. It becomes a norm. It opens a brand new avenue to meet socially and to uh, uh, do things together virtually. Another new experience is buying food using food vouchers or coupons at various shopping malls and different uh, food courts with my daughters. I feel like a grab food deliverer when dining out is near impossible. Crochet and knitting neglected for some time appeared in my hands again. Evening walks with family, occasional weekend picnics provide a space for me to relax. But these dark times can be funny times once I learn to accept the restrictive challenges. When I look at my collage, it gives me a hopeful feeling. Making this collage is an enjoyable experience, an outlet to express my thoughts and feelings through this pandemic period. I would like to thank uh, uh, the organizer for uh, giving us this opportunity to do our collage. Now I will hand it over to Kim Eng from Singapore. Hello, good morning. I'm Kim Eng from Singapore. My collage on the left-hand side, the big picture is a, a more like 
world scientists were busy developing vaccine for COVID-19 as quickly as possible. In Singapore, we are encouraged to take two doses of vaccine injection. Personal hygiene and hand washing frequent, frequently. Sanitizing and keeping our home and surrounding clean too. During circuit breaker and hasten uh, alert, I was blessed the opportunity, privilege and flexibility to stay at home, to enjoy doing things like attending to Zoom session, cooking home cooked food and exercising, hiking trails to park connector networks and discovering the beauty of nature and taking photograph, photograph of such sunset from my kitchen window. So thank you. We presented you. some of our art to you, but each piece has a unique meaning. As we explain our personal work to each other, we all developed a good comfort level and mutual respect within our group. This is some of the other art that was not talked about. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon, uh, Kim Ng, Betty, Tina, and everybody else who uh, created the work. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jeffrey. Thank you for joining us. Uh, sorry for the slight delay at the beginning, but uh, we're now sharing with you the creation, uh, the different workshop experiences of the seniors. So you've just heard the collage uh, work sharing created by the seniors. Next, we're going to go to storytelling. And the seniors met our Singapore's um, Rosemary Sumaya, who's also in the room. Rosemary, you want to just wave? I think in gallery view, you should be able to see her. Yeah, there she is in red. Okay, so now we're going to pass this time to Libby, Leslie, and Yin Mi to share with you uh, their experience in storytelling and creating their own stories. So, Leslie, Libby, and, Kim, uh, and, sorry, and Yin Mi. <laughs> I'm trying to multitask as you can see. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. And a special thanks to Rosemary, who taught us a lot about storytelling and the ability to tell stories. Storytelling here in the US exists, but I believe it's a, quite a contrast to that in Singapore. <coughs> Excuse me. In our knowledge of the US storytelling, it exists mostly in specialized topics. For example, regions of the country that have their own own cultures, their own, uh, their own dialects, even uh, and accents. Um, Maine humor, Alaskan gold rush, Southern Appalachian life are typical examples of that. And uh, before we're through, I'll tell a little story about Maine humor, and, and Libby will tell a story uh, about how Seattle got its name. And then we'll turn it over to uh, Ying. Yin Ni, uh, to tell us how it differs in Singapore. So what happened in, in Maine is that there was a, a man from away who was trying to drive his car up to a little town in northern Maine, and he was totally lost. And he finally was driving down the road and he spotted somebody on the side of the road. They rolled down the window and he said, Tell me how to get to Madawaska. The guy said, you go down the road here a piece and you turn, no, no, wait a minute. You go back and go three blocks and turn left. And, no, come to think of it, there's no way to get there from here. From that humorous story, the story that I shared with our Singaporean friends is about the found, the, how Seattle got its name. And in the 1850s, when white settlers came to, around the 1850s, when white settlers came to uh, this part of the Pacific Northwest, uh, a Native American who is one of the coast, who was one of the Coast Salish people and a member of the Duwamish and Suquamish 
tribes uh, greeted the white settlers. Um, and this uh, Native American uh, is greatly revered still in our region and uh, in Seattle with many place names. He had various names that he was known by, such as Cells or CC, uh, but his name has come to be known as Chief Seattle. And so Seattle is the only American city that is named for a great uh, Native American leader. Um, his burial place and his well-known daughter, Princess Angeline, are nearby as are members of his descendants, as, our, as his descendants. So we are very much among the Duwamish and the Suquamish and the Coast Salish peoples. And uh, we feel a direct connection to the indigenous and the Native Americans who we are neighbors with. And now I'll turn it back to Yin, our friend Yin Mi, who is in Singapore. Hi, everyone. Um, as always, Singapore is full of stories. Um, Singaporeans um, share a number of stories, including one that is related to um, the founder of Singapore. But I think the story that caught everyone's imagination is one about the hungry ghost. Well, strictly speaking, the hungry ghost isn't a story. It is a festival that we celebrate in Singapore. And we just finished that hungry ghost festival. But when we were doing the storytelling, we were right in the midst of it. So the fascination there, of course, with horror stories and with ghosts, and I think is something that crosses all cultures. In Singapore, among the Malays and the Indians and the Chinese, there are just so many horror stories and ghost stories of sorts, right? So with The Hungry Ghost, really, the story around it is that uh, uh, in The Hungry Ghost Month, which is the seventh month in the lunar calendar, uh, the gates of hell are open and all the ghosts are allowed to wander the earth. And these uh, hungry ghosts, especially those whom, who did not receive any offerings you know, the rest of the time, the rest of the year earlier on, will be wandering around the earth looking for food to eat. And so people uh, make offerings to these people and these, uh, these ghosts, I mean, and the offerings could be in the form of um, food, fruit, you know, cake or rice and things like that, as well as just papers, which they burn. Um, and sometimes they also offer, um, how would you say it, uh, structures like houses and cars and all that. Uh, and of course, now it's, it's also very fashionable to offer uh, credit cards and in this COVID era, the vaccination. <laughs> Jeffrey is saying something about the head. <laughs> so anyway, uh, these things are usually offered along the roadside and people, you know, um, let the hungry ghosts feast on these things. And when they feast on those things, you know, we hope that they will go back to hell full and happy, yeah? Uh, so that's the story we told. Uh, that I think got everybody's imagination and people started talking about the similarities or the differences between the Hungry Ghost Festival and Halloween. And of course there are differences and people are afraid of Hungry Ghost Festival here. In fact, you're trying not to step on the joss steaks or to you know, touch the food and things like that. Whereas I think Halloween is really a fun thing. People dress up to enjoy and things like that. So I think through the storytelling, we found out that there are some similarities and some differences between our cultures. But I found what was common really is that in both our countries, we love a good story. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Yinni, Les, and Libby uh, for that wonderful explanation of our, our storytelling workshop that we did together. The third workshop that we uh, did together was a dance and movement workshop that was taught by um, uh, our uh, Silver Kite teaching artist, Susan Wicked Ford. Um, and uh, it was a wonderful uh, experience. And I will go ahead and turn it over to uh, Anu, Jean, and Bihua, who will talk a little bit more about that. Bihua, do you want to unmute your microphone? Yeah. Bihua? Yep. Okay. 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 Good morning. Again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Singapore, and good evening to Seattle. Movement helps indicate a personal quality in an individual. Very lucky to have Susan Wickerford convey these four personal quality characteristics, visionary, 
organizer, collaborator, and driver. They are very specific traits which we could portray through dance or movement. Dance teaches us determination, teamwork, precision, and compassion. In our everyday life, we face many challenges and stresses. We feel dance is a wonderful expression to release stress. In fact, I take great pleasure in doing a Zoom live dance class with my sister who resides in Australia. Now, perhaps you require to use your imagination to portray these traits when we demonstrate the dancers later. You will also have chance to join us and experience it later. Here is a small demonstration of the characteristic of dance. That blown kiss was my cue. <laughs> um, I the same. I had a Singapore trio of women that I got to work with for the collage arts that also happened to be part of the collaborator group. And each of the different four skills had a different um, set of dance steps that they used. I didn't belong to collaborators. I was the organizer group. I will join the collaborator the collaborators dance to demonstrate the four selected collaborator movements. Please feel free to join along with us as synchronized swimmers. We will teach once and then repeat. Hit it, maestro. <laughs> Any leadership team needs to have all four of these skills to be a good team. As the visionary group before us illustrated, we need visionaries, drivers, organizers, and collaborators to be successful. Everyone give yourself a hug. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and the last workshop uh, that we, the city has had a, uh, great time with uh, was with our local uh, playwright, Adit Kosnan. And to tell us a little bit more, we've got Jasmine Sabat. Jasmine, let me quickly spotlight you. Sorry. Um, towards the end of that particular workshop, not too long ago, I might add, we all happily read our monologues out loud, revealing our real life accumulated experiences, passes of our inner sanctum without any guard. But when we were told last week that we have to read out loud to all of you out here today, we just realized one thing. Um, maybe we shouldn't, because if this is not the usual forum of seniors that we've grown accustomed to. It was at this point that we go, oh, right, we, we know one thing has changed. We have built a bond of trust amongst ourselves, just ourselves, over the week, so much so that we can say anything we want. Uh, whatever we want, do whoever we want, without any censorship at all. 
no more even cultural divide between Americans and Singaporeans. We were really together as one. So fellow friends, acquaintances um, at home and abroad, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share some of our unreserved monologues we have penned on that fateful Wednesday. So please welcome, first of all, Anu from Singapore. Thank you, Jasmine. Hi, everyone. Hi. Essence of a name. The princess of my heart and soul. This cherubic bundle of joy with her sparkling eyes and her mop of curls, but full of apprehension, was placed in my hands. And cling on, she did. Her familiarity was indeed dissipated, meeting two strangers. Little did she know they were to become her world. Our dream had come true, and it was almost surreal. Our tryst with destiny, the gods intervened. And Leia, the princess of my heart, knows that love is simply a universal language. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Anu. That's really moved some of us when we heard it the first time. And it's still the same today. Oh. It's also, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, really. And it's so unfortunate that our fellow um, monologuer couldn't be here today. Her name is Lily, and she has passed her monologue to me, and I will read it out loud to all of you. It's entitled, My Name. I was given the name you me when I was born. It was the name given to the fifth child of seven children. At four years old, my name was changed to Eid. It became the name of the second child of two children. Why was it changed, you may ask? Well, my adoptive parents changed it, but I never get the chance to ask them why. My first set of parents gave me up so I can have a better life. I struggled as a child with many questions. Why did they give me up? What's wrong with me? My second set of parents adopted me so I can have a better life. I struggled as a child with many more questions. Do they love me? Why am I, am I lovable? Am I worthy? My struggles are all over now. Instead of resentment and insecurities, I feel blessed. I did, how, how did it happen? Perhaps I'll tell you in my next monologue. Nevertheless, the name means that I am blessed with two sets of parents. Loved me very much. That's from me. And now I want you, you have your tissues ready, so I'll welcome Jane. That's Hi. Her Hi, Jane. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks. Thanks to Adit, we all uh, love our monologues, and I decided to change from me to one of my heroes in my Hall of Fame, and uh, his name is David, and uh, this is what I uh, enjoy writing. Oh, David, my friend. I love your never die spirit. Having lost your first wife to cancer, and now with your second wife's current underlying cancer, you are giving your time and expertise to our town council in drawing up policies for our wellness. How do you do this? Thank you, Jane. Back Thank to Jeffrey. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let me add. Thank you, everyone, for sharing those beautiful monologues and for the dance and the stories and uh, the collage. So uh, before we move on with our question and answer section, I think just let's take a moment to uh, give the participants 
So applause for, for their artwork and for sharing that with us this evening. So, um, or this morning, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, so uh, thanks again, everybody for joining us. Um, we uh, are going to now begin the question and answer section of our uh, time together today. So if you have questions for the participants, um, if you're joining us via the Zoom room, you can uh, put those questions in the chat. Um, I know uh, people are joining us in different kinds of ways um, uh, this evening, so um, you can communicate that to us from whatever format you're on, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to, to get those questions and be able to answer those um, uh, uh, for you. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jeffrey, who's going to be uh, asking and facilitating the first uh, of our questions. Okay, thanks, thanks everyone for joining us. I just want to quickly acknowledge Lily who ran away from her course to show her face. Lily, do you want to just wave? And, and yeah, yeah, you can unmute. You want to just say hello to our friends? Lily? Hello everyone, yeah, okay. hello. Yeah. yeah. So we, we heard uh, Lily's monologue read by, by Jasmine. So maybe while Lily's here, maybe we can ask the first question to her. What did you, what did you enjoy most about you know, this, this program between our simple friends and our local friends? I think one is uh, making friends, uh, you know, um, and people of about the same age. And I think uh, every week is something to look forward to because every week we are having something different. So it's quite exciting for me. Great, thank you. Thank you, Lily. Uh, let's hear from a, a participant from the US. Let's ask, uh, shall we ask Libby? How was it for you? Because you joined us as a husband and wife team. It was just wonderful. As uh, Lily said, it was the highlight of our week and uh, we really feel very close to our friends in Singapore. And uh, we hope to continue being in touch with folks. And we are really grateful to Jen and Jeffrey for facilitating, creating and facilitating our group. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming along every week and, and sharing uh, your experiences and, and also your memories of uh, living and working in Singapore. Is that right? Yes, correct. We, we lived in Singapore for seven years, and it's just wonderful to renew those ties. Yeah. And, and Leslie, what about you? How was your experience attending this with your wife? Was, was it challenging? Or was it... <laughs> <laughs> you can't move, well, right? I, I'm not sure it was challenging. And to be very honest about it, at first I was very skeptical. Mm. Uh, but uh, I came to really enjoy it and, and as Libby said, make good friends and renew our acquaintances uh, in Singapore. And we found that uh, quite a few of the group here have uh, pretty much the same background that we did in Singapore. So it was, uh, it's, it's really a small world and it, it just goes to show that. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Libby. Thank you, Lily. I think, yeah, Lily's still there. Okay. Were there surprises? Any of the participants, were, were you surprised at any with yourself or with the experience? With any of the workshops? Any of you were surprised? Any nice surprises? Anyone? Oh, yes, uh, Yin Yi. Hi. I was really surprised that we can dance on Zoom. <laughs> I was just wondering how that session is going to happen, you know, with movement and all that. Um, but it was a wonderful surprise and really I enjoyed that so much. I think everybody did too. And it was actually particularly fun for me to see Gordon in his uh, living room dancing away. So yeah, that was a big surprise to me. So many things can be done on Zoom and you know, wow. Yeah, so I, I think one of the things I learned is that, you know, you, we never know until we try. And, and that's one of the fabulous things about the times you're in, right? We're also, there's so many constraints and so many things we can't do. And I think if we let our imagination run wild and, you know, you try little things like this whole idea of this project. It initially, it was like, what? How is this possible? There's time difference. And I think with a lot of planning and hard work, uh, Jen and myself, and of course, with the support of the Seattle Public Library and our SG Fund, 
we were able to make this possible. And of course, we've got all the other community partners because once you plan a project, we don't quite know who's going to come. You know, for seniors, be willing to commit to eight weeks. Yeah. So talking about surprises, Gordon, any surprise for you? Well, I just project? thought that the organization um, of so many very, you know, collage art, uh, you know, fine arts, dance, um, storytelling, and creative writing or theater type of work um, were just very um, daunting. And it's just a credit to you to, to come up with the format and the, the activities. And when you did that, people will come. And um, a lot of people would have loved to be join us, but they have to be able to, you know, take that next step or get that next opportunity and do something that's truly international. I mean, it's the time zone is 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 a problem, but 15 hours. <laughs> I was up at five o'clock in the morning for my set. <laughs> um, but, um, it's it's very rewarding and it's great to meet some new people. And I think people will come when you provide it. So kudos to um, both Jen and Jeffrey. Yes. Yeah. Jen, you have questions. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you want to unmute the mic, Jen? Yeah. Okay. I want to say I really enjoy hearing stories the first time in my life. For all seniors, and we have different cultures crossing uh, nearly globally. We have, you know, and I also like the monologue. I'm amazed that I'm able to, uh, in such a short time, able to write the monologue. And I look forward to learning more. I am really amazed that we are really cross, crossing borders and we really cross cultures too. And we all gel so well. I have attended other groups where there were juniors involved, but this is really interesting that we are learning years and stories that I have grown richer for attending this. Thank you so much for all the hard work to make this so meaningful and eventful for me and for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Jane. Jane and Nancy. Thank you. Uh, Jen, do you want to... Uh, oh, sorry, you've got a, a friend, uh, Siang Lok. Yeah, yes. Siang Lok, you want, yeah. I, I like to say something. You, you asked for some surprise. Um, any surprise that for the participant? Yes. So, to, uh, because I attracted to this uh, presentation is true because of the word uh, silver kite. I thought okay. there's uh, some kite kind of a workshop that I can learn and some uh, form of a kite that to me the kite is a symbolic maybe the, the, the sequel of this after this event would be the actual kite collage. The, to me, the kite is like freedom, freedom from the COVID-19. It's an escape. It's a tunnel to time tunnel escape to somewhere. <laughs> but the, uh, it's the, the surprise that it's another version of the kite, silver kite that uh, you, uh, all of us here uh, presenting is uh, so versatile in many ways because of free expression, in individual expression and freedom of expression, but to this, uh, to the collage form. And I like the kind of um, the, this uh, versatile form of expression, uh, of individual expression. So I just really enjoy the different form, dance and all kind of observation around us. Yes, thank you. Just my sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Siang Lo. That's such yeah. a beautiful metaphor you used. I just want to share that uh, Ruth, uh, Yo, uh, really love that metaphor and imagery. Uh, and then also we, we've got uh, Lin who said, you know, lovely work from all participants. Thank you. Wendy says, yes. 
And Rosemary said it's such a great metaphor and understanding of the name Silver Kite. Shall we listen to Silver Kite's uh, founder, director, <laughs> Jen? Yes, thank you. And thank you so much for that wonderful um, uh, description of, of uh, the kite and of Silver Kite. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, thanks again, everybody, for, for sharing your uh, experiences with us um, so far tonight. Um, I'm going to pose another question to the group. Um, and I'd love uh, for any of the participants um, who were involved in the eight week program to respond to this question. Um, and the question is, what were some things that you learned about yourself during the workshop? What did you learn about yourself during the workshop? And if you'd like to respond to that question, you can just raise your hand and we'll, we'll pin and spotlight you. Tina, Tina wants to respond to that question. Okay, Tina, if you could unmute, that would be great. Every day I face my collage art, I just smile to myself. I couldn't believe it. I could do such a nice piece of art. And I really thank Silver Kai, right? People from Seattle Library and Jeffrey in Singapore and all the participants for the support and cheers that we carry on for so many weeks to be together in this group. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Tina. We've got Jasmine who raised his hand. Yes, Jasmine. Yep. So I'm a Singaporean who is abroad. I live in East Java. So there's an hour behind from Singapore. So that will be like probably 16 or 14 hours from Seattle then. So I've, I've always been in the arts to a large, over the large parts of my life. So the art part isn't totally new to me, technically, but experiencing it with newcomers in the arts. Now that is a real challenge. That's what I discovered about myself, that I don't, I'm not the only one deserving of art. Every single person on earth can collaborate and express themselves through arts. So that's what I discovered about myself. So when I do go back to Singapore, when I go back to, if I go back to Singapore, <laughs> I, I like to collaborate as well to as many others who are not familiar with it, yet get them involved. So that's what I discovered most about myself. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. We've got Betty who wants to answer. Next, Betty. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I want to acknowledge and thank uh, Lai Ling, uh, next to Siang Lok, for introducing this program to us. So it's through her that uh, all, all three, four of us are in this program. What, what I've discovered uh, about myself is through the... Uh, uh, thinking through my collage, because uh, uh, having to present, you know, do presentation is a surprise thing to, for us. So spending time uh, going through my collage in each item made me realize that there are, for among us, this resilience that we have among our silver <laughs> group of people, it's really amazing, you know, to go through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And also the surprising thing is that we could work with Gordon, who is at Seattle, <laughs> forcing him to get up very early in the morning for us to rehearse our program. And yes, it's such a blessing to us. Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing we've got six more minutes before we finish and we haven't heard from four of our friends. So can I ask uh, Jean, Kim Eng, Bihua and Anu if you like to share with us as a result of this experience, you know, what's next for you? What, you know, what, what's next? Jean, she, the visionary participant. You want to, yeah, Jean, you want to unmute your mic? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that uh, certainly international relations um, is, is so enjoyable. Uh, there's some depth to it uh, that I miss in my um, ordinary life. Uh, so that's certainly something I'll pursue with Jen, probably uh, through Silver Kite. Um, I, I think that seniors are a delight as well because they have that life experience um, and they are willing to share it and say, and expose themselves 
Uh, so that's that's what I will pursue. Great. And what about Anu? What's next for you? Uh, you know, uh, when uh, Rosemary asked me uh, whether anybody would be interested in joining this group, I thought, why not me as well? Because, you know, <laughs> to, not yet a savior, but I thought, you know, it, it would be quite an experience. Actually, I was quite dreading it, but it turns out it's such a lovely non-judgmental group. And uh, it was so much fun doing all of this. I would, uh, I'm an artist. So, you know, Singapore arts appeals to me. So I'll continue with my art and, uh, uh, you know, if anyone is willing to collaborate in, uh, in future through Silver Indian. Heights and Singapore arts, we'll be happy to uh, join in for the Zoom session. Anu, once so Indian. thank you. Thank you, Anu. Let's hear from Kim Eng, yeah. because Kim Eng is an active volunteer in various things. So what's next for you after this workshop, Kim Eng? Do you want to unmute your mic? Yeah, I have to thank uh, Jeffrey. <laughs> thank you for this uh, workshop, because uh, it's posted in our chat group. Uh, so uh, I enjoy thoroughly this workshop. So I hope that from here, we can proceed on, maybe continue or in some way or other. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, you. Jeffrey. Thank you. And, and the group. Yeah, and thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank so you, everyone. Have, thank you, thank you. Let's hear from Bihua before I forget. Yes, Bihua. <laughs> yes, uh, Bihua here. Actually, when Lailin, our friend of a library, posted this, I was the first one to sign up. Being working in the multinational company, um, America, HP, I found that uh, I need to reconnect with the Americans, you know, uh, uh, again, just to explore some of my uh, reconnected with all this culture and so on. And um, I think this is a very interesting because I'm a very science person. I'm a statistician with the formula. Everything is one equal to one equal to two. But I think I'm very not an art person. Through this, I discovered that uh, I need to pursue a lot of this, you know, apart from science like art, you no know, drawing, collage, you no know, monologue and writing. I think I would like to pursue that. You know, I try very hard on my uh, this art piece, I feel very pleased about it with the different colors of the sky and then with the kind of landscape of Singapore. I, I really discovered that I have some other interests apart from science because I'm doing statistics a lot with numbers, you know, with the problem solving. But this uh, is the other area I rediscover myself. So I think it's good that I meet a lot of friends, reconnected with the Americas again, even though we can't go to Americas. So I wish all these American countries Come to Singapore to enjoy our different culture. I know that American and Singapore Chinese culture are very, very different. So I think being Chinese and can be quite different. You know, when you reside in America and when you reside in Singapore are totally different. Last Lebby, and then they have experienced that, you know, it's a different culture. I wish then a good luck and come back to Singapore if you have a chance. We are very good hosts in Singapore anyway. Yeah, do come, do come. I, I wish this session will continue. I think um, we'll continue in one way or the others. As I just mentioned the other day, uh, we can, everyone can chip in certain money and keep on going if we have energy. I think we have all the energy, even though we are senior, we have a lot of energy you know, through yeah. this you know, eight-week eight week session. Thank you, Jeffrey and uh, and, and and Jane. Yeah, uh, uh, yes. And, and before we round up, I thought I should quickly thank Mrs. Kiang. Is that Mrs. Yeah. Kiang there? Yes, yes. Mrs. Yes. Kiang, you want to say something? Mrs. Kiang is a retired librarian who is still working in the oral archives and various things. So maybe you want to just quickly share your experience watching our friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the session very much. Must thanks Rosemary. Rosemary. Uh, introduced these sessions for me then because of my work I could not attend so I asked my friend to attend I also asked my husband Xiang Lok but I think he's busy with the other <laughs> volunteer work so, so I say I'm, I cannot miss the last one uh. <laughs> <laughs> so finally 
but the, I didn't see the kite lay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do something with kites the next time. <laughs> yeah, because the word silver kite is so clear in your title. Besides yeah. the surviving pandemic, uh, yeah. or, or to add, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Jeffrey, for these sessions. Uh, we, I really enjoyed these last sessions. I hope that we have continued more sessions. I also would like to thank the Friends of the Library uh, Book Club for their support. And you all are all welcome to join our Friends of Library Book Club. We have the next session on 28 September. It's at 8 p.m. Singapore time. Xianglok is uh, facilitating. <laughs> so come and join okay. us if you, are, if you are available. Great. We have many good facilitators here like Jasmine, Betty, Tina, uh, Tina Biwa. Uh -huh. Rosemary also can come and join us. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think Jen, Jen, you, you have a link to some feedback that you need our friends to help you with. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ryan, perhaps you can post that uh, in the chat. Um, it, uh, the Seattle Public Library is really interested in getting your feedback about the session uh, tonight. So uh, if you could please fill out the survey that's going to appear in the chat in a moment, um, that would be really helpful to us. And again, we really appreciate your flexibility. I know some of you kind of were bouncing around a little bit tonight. Um, so thank you for, for joining us. And and I want to say um, thank you so much, Jeffrey, uh, for being such a wonderful co-facilitator for this project. It really has been my pleasure uh, to be working with you. And uh, it's been really wonderful to meet all of our participants. Um, we will have a, a debrief session just with the participants next week as we talk about um, the program and sort of figure out next steps um, there. But we're so pleased that we have been able to share some of our experiences with you this evening. Um, and we will have a video of this uh, session that will be available on the Silver Kite website. Um, I will put uh, Silver Kite's website in the chat here in just a second. And so will, and Jeffrey, you can put um, uh, Theater Today's website in the chat as well. So if you're interested in um, uh, visiting either of our organizations to learn a little bit more uh, about that. Um, and Nancy has just posted the uh, survey. Uh, so we would appreciate your feedback um, by filling that out for us as well. So I want to thank again. I, I, want to, um, I want to say something. <laughs> sorry? Sorry, sorry. I want to say something. I want yeah. to thank the Seattle Public Libraries uh, in 2005, I was asked to do a campaign to promote uh, reading among Singaporeans. Then I saw the Seattle Public Library. You have the one book, one city. So I borrowed the idea from your library and we have a Read Singapore campaign for almost uh, more than 10 years more than and 10 more than 10 years. So every time I mention the Seattle Public Library that give us this idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, Thank that's you that's that. wonderful. Thank you for letting us know. It's a pretty wonderful program. So I'll have to pass that on to the person who runs it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing Thank that. Thank you. So we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up um, our, um, our time uh, together here. Uh, I want to thank again our partners um, who worked together to create this program and this evening's um, uh, event. Uh, thanks to the Seattle Public Library for your sponsorship and your incredible support of this program. And also thanks to our Singapore Fund for your support of this program as well. Um, thanks to the Seattle partners of Kinon and CISC for your support of the program and helping us to find participants and ACE seniors in Singapore as well. Um, uh, the program was co-facilitated uh, and produced by Silver Cat Community Arts and in Seattle and Theater Today in Singapore. Um, and it has been an incredible and wonderful international collaboration. Uh, so thanks again, everybody, uh, for uh, being here tonight. If you have any additional questions or uh, comments, go ahead and enter those into the chat. And again, please uh, do fill out the survey. Um, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening uh, if you're in the United States and day if you're in Singapore. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.
Have a good day. Thank you.